I think it's still on the move east. I mean, yeah, package was. Copy. There it is, yep, yeah. right over it. How about another five, Rennie? Five east. Yeah. Or five down. Five east. Bridge, nav. Probably come down a couple meters. Step five meters east. Thank you. Last time we were off ten, and the stinger's only... Um, it's not very heavy. Well, the stinger's only seven meters, so... Oh, yeah. We don't want to put the weights in the mud by yep. that cable, so... Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I also don't. It's coming towards you, but I don't know if it's going to make the full 15 ever because. No, know. I don't think so. He's got to move it more than the hook yeah, is. Yeah. But it's still on Unless the move. Wait two days. Slow and steady. Like that. I've sat here waiting for him, and the crane driver and the boat driver will put the hook right in your hand for you, and you don't have to move the ROV. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's still coming east there. So if you're <coughs> right over the package when you fly out to get the hook, then whatever heading that is, this heading, then in theory you just back up until we pay out slack, until we have enough to hook it up. Looks like it's about seven meters in front of you. Halfway. When you when you fly up to the wire, you can fly up a meter or so high. Where you want to? What'll happen if you try and grab it too low? The hook will come up and hit the manip. So mm -hmm. it's better to grab the wire high, even if it's a couple meters. Then we can just um, loosen the jaws and let it slide up. Sometimes got to. We got lucky the other night and got it right at the end. It, it was getting close. What we don't want is the hook to come up and heave on the bottom of the jaw. So air on the tank and the hook two meters below. Once we got the wire, then we can we got control of it. We can always. It's, it's easy to slide down the wire. It's not easy to repair your finger after the hook rips it off. <laughs> so, yeah, like the first shiny tape there. I would aim for that or above it. Okay. And I'll want a little slack this time since we're making the hook. It's kind of hard for. Danny last time too. Alright, that's pretty close to five meters. Yep. Alright. Shiny tape. It's funny we see even a little bit of south move because of the crane haul in, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, 
time to heave, so when we close the jaws, it's on the upheave. But it can heave up and down in the open jaws, okay. Do you want it in a bubble too, or you go? Oh, you're right. Oh, I think I got it. I can never remember which way to move that thing. Oh. Come up and back a little bit. Give yourself some slack in the wire. You can pay out a couple meters for us, Randy. Winds control will pay out two meters. <coughs> That's a nice amount of slack there. So I'll just wait till we see those weights. Or at least have them make sure it's out in front. <coughs> I think uh, the package there they are. is yeah, they are. to your right a little bit. Uh, you can all stop in there. Any winch control, all stop. Uh, while you're sliding to the right, and looking for a package below you. There's there it the is. package in her bubble. I'm gonna. Reach down and grab a hold of the hook. Maybe pay out a couple meters. Or Winch control, pay out two meters. When it starts getting tight, you can always come up. Yep. Copy. Kind of lost our slack. Yeah, we, we can fly forward a bit there, Jake. Get over yeah, the package. <laughs> Can't reach the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your head to the left and. Uh, We're going to start to get be around it. And around it. Yeah, and just back up a bit and then. Keep it out in front of you. Yeah, back up, back, back up, back up. Back up, backing up. Let's wrap it around. You can go back west if you want. Uh, bring your head to the left a little. Yeah, 
looks like we might have to slide back to the west a little. Five meters west. Sure. Bridge nav. Five meters west. Greedy on our boat move, I think. You can come up a little and keep that belly out in front of you. There's a the weights. Yeah, you want to stay out from underneath those things. Taking my time here because uh, I want to make it easier to make the hooky if I have a nice grab here. <coughs> I think I'm up above the uh, porch there. Got it in 180. Uh, can I turn the down lights on for a minute? Yep. Down lights coming on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <coughs> Let's go hook it up. Do you want me to pay out with the winch? Uh, let us figure out where we are first. So package under us somewhere here. I think that's it in front of the hook. Yeah, that is it. Gonna come down a little. Yeah, you can pay out a couple meters, right? Here. Winch control, pay out two meters. Is that it way over there? Just uh, right next to the hook there, dead ahead. Yep, yep. Can move another five west, but... Yeah, we want to keep that mess out. Yeah, five west. don't want to be under it. No. Bridge, nav. Five meters west. Copy. I'll turn the down lights back off. They're not helping. Uh, 
Or where are they helping? Eh, I think it's better without at the moment. Bring the whole mess down five meters. Oh, I think that's the hook, the weights out there. I think that's a platform. Oh, this one here, isn't it? That's the weights. Yeah, it's kind of a double-edged sword because we don't want to get under it, but also we don't want to be holding holding it when it's trying to move away. <laughs> And it won't move away. Yeah. You can come down a few meters. And Winch payout? Uh, both, yeah. Roger. Just so we can see the seabed a bit better. It's kind of hard from up here. Winch control payout two meters. The whole mess down at five. <coughs> So you can see the wire there in Argus, and then our Herc tether, so it's clear yep. of it now, but hopefully that ship move will start to drag it. Copy. I just lost visual. Do you have it? I backed up a, a hair. Okay. Yeah, we're good. That's perfect right there. Yeah, the weight seems to be moving yeah. away from you, which is good. There it is. Yeah, there we go. Right by the hook. Yeah, if you could put the weights five meters on the other side of the package, we'll just hang out here. <laughs> hang out on the wire. Yeah. Chase it around. Those two moves should, should do it. Yeah, we got greedy to the west there. Yeah. Or west, or patience. Um, I'm not sure where the where we are in the zoo here. Is that the old package just past the shackle, or is that the new one? That's the the one past the shackle, I believe, is the one that we're hooking. The new one is beyond yeah. that. Right. I think we can. Uh, Bring both of us down a couple meters so we can see the seabed a little better. Roger, two meters payout. Yeah, sure. Winch control payout two meters. Come down a couple meters too, Jake. <laughs>
Copy. Is there a way we could tilt up to see the if the weight? Yeah, we got yeah, that's that better. All right, meters. Oh, yeah, Rog. Right. Is it moving away from us or? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I see a package out there. What's that? I see a package out there. Yeah, just want to hook it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. do another five west. It would be on the wrong side. Yeah. I mean, I could. I just don't want to go too north and risk the weights being near the new stuff either. So. Well, as long as it. You know, none of it's on the seabed, so we got to get yeah. the weights on the other side of what we're going to hook up. All right, another five west bridge nav. One more step, five meters west. Thank you. <laughs> it's back the way we came. We should have. We should have. Been more patient. <laughs> no, we should have got it. We did. Grabbed it up at 10 meters and drug it back. Yeah. We don't want to have to fight it in the mud, though. It's, well, patience is better. We'll be able to do a hook up without. Hook up a back away and a take off. And yeah. Well, get if out we just if we kill the viz, it's yeah. yeah it's kind of then it can get not as fun because we can't see. Spicy. Yeah, well, then we just run away, <coughs> wait, and start over. Yeah, so you don't want to land the weights, right? No. Nope. Yeah, because nope. then that'll dust it. Yeah. So we just want this, like, clobber head well, <laughs> heaving. <laughs> yeah. <the laughs> Hopefully out of, out of view. The yeah. headache ball, yeah. We yeah, want yeah. that on the other side of what on we're... On the other side, yeah. Yeah. If we had what we needed to hook up under us, so we could just come down and hook it up. So yeah, you're driving the weights to get them. Yes. It doesn't look like we're tugging them, so. No. I just want them to go, go no, away, we, faster we can, away. We can pull them back towards us because we have the scope, right? And so even a heave is going to be, it's not going to be a up heave like this, you know? Yeah. It's going to be out in front of us, so it's not going to hurt us. Yeah, I just mean now, I was making sure that we're not, we're not, Influencing it, no. staying east. I don't think so. But that belly looks pretty belly-like. It does. You might be a little. You can, you're five meters away from it. Doesn't take much. Seems like every five meter move is moving us three inches closer to that platform. <laughs> right. That's why. That's why I have a little. You know, just a little worried that it's kind of mm -hmm. tugging. But get a little closer to yeah. it. Yeah. That's slack. I don't think the five meter moves are doing anything. Well, uh, now it's been it's been three of them, so it's fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so close. It's all right if it swings on the other side. We can pull it back. Yeah, yeah. It's starting to it's starting to go. Yeah, we got greedy to the west there. Sorry, my bad. It's it looks like it's tracking. Well, yeah, we were just worried about the seven meter line because we don't want to yeah. be too yeah. yanking at it either.
We're getting closer. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, you want to do another 10 meters less? <laughs> sure. Yeah. I think so. Bridge nav. 10 meters west. We got a five meter DP footprint, so. Is that 100 milli inches? <laughs> Actually, the footprint's been within a meter. Has it? Yeah, it's doing, it does well in this weather. Mm -hmm. That paired with our, no, the, C, the Fugro doesn't go through there, Never mind. that's the ship's GPS. I think you gotta have a lot of weight to get a five meter move. Two kilometers away. Well, that's what I thought, but then it moved east with ease. <laughs> it just yeah. shot over east. It might be just the current. Or yeah, I maybe. Know. I don't know. A lot of dynamics happening there. Yeah, yeah. I kind of want to go five meters north too because the yeah we we jogged south after the crane yeah uh, the same yeah I'll do it after this seem to be south of it yeah northward north is fine as long as we don't come near the new one but like you said we're not landing it so. Totally getting closer. <clears throat> Bridge nav. Step five meters north. Sneak around there. I know he's so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at this point, I'm called degrees, 25 but. meters west, so it's gotta eventually <laughs> go. <laughs> it is cl inching closer now. Yeah, it's moving. Yeah, it is. I'm sure. Well, then we'll have like a, a five-second sure window to <laughs> hook it. And then yeah, <laughs> just have them track a line. <laughs> yeah, just go west. I <laughs> keep going west. Well, at this rate, we'll have plenty of time to hook it as we pass by. Yeah. I want to see some north move, too. Those bean bags have moved a quarter of an inch to the left of center of screen. 
I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> Jake's breaking the law by five degrees. Five degree law break. <laughs> Five degree happy. Oh no, no, no. Three forty five. Yeah, you gotta you're you're still within the box. Yeah, keep in mind every west move we're just bringing Argus closer to. Here, <laughs> yeah. here here's your your what your window. Yeah, yeah. they both box. they there both look the same. Yeah. I mean technically you are correct. Every west move does bring Argus closer. Since it's but in Honolulu. <laughs> but it yeah, but it it seems to it seems to also be moving Argus quicker than this. I, I think you Danny's referring to the fact that Argus is in Honolulu and Atlanta oh, yeah. is here with us. <laughs> so every West move, we are closer to Argus. To Argus right. Yes. Mm, we're yeah, we're ten meters away from the wire. That's where we were with the tool basket. It's right there. <laughs> wait for it. Wait for it. I can do another five north, which is probably what we need now. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Bridge nav. I lost sight of the weights. Five meters north. Thank you. Then after that, it'll be another five. Twenty meters north. <laughs> Just go on the fly. Are you sure the ship's moving? Yeah. Are you showing it moving? Yeah, it's moving. The problem with this north move is if the cable does not move as fast as Atalanta, because I'm bringing Atalanta right, right. into that. Yeah. Maybe I should stop that no, and wait for the what, other. See what happens. It's right. swinging out. I'm watching it in the yeah. sonar in the Atalanta as well. You're coming up a bit, aren't you? We're way yeah. up. Do you want to come down anymore with the weights? No, I think we're, well, we'll see when we get there. Yeah. And I'll leave that wire in the mud. Yeah. Well, we won't be able to see anything. <laughs> hey, if that Atlanta camera runs away, you can click the other way and it stops. So what? desperate to what? get Man. <laughs> Which day in October do you open your Christmas presents? I'm still working that one out. I can't quite. I don't know what he means by that. What? what? Which day in October? Not, not very patient. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, the patience. Yeah. He's is patient. A lot more patient than I am. Patience is key. I'm just jumping at the gun over here. It's right there, just <laughs> waiting for you. Ed. <laughs> <laughs> what is this little surprise radio up here? Oh, yeah, it's like a forget about me radio. Put it here. Never forget about it. Yeah, we're uh, much better equipped for radios than we used to be. Yeah. Just give it a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until somebody comes and changes all the codes. Chase's gonna fly it in at this rate. <laughs> he is gonna fly it in. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thought that's what you wanted. <laughs> well, we'd probably be all right because we're five meters up, so you'll be well below the weight when you yeah, go around to yeah. hook it up. All right. But let me yeah, know. It's still right. still moving a bit, so you could do. A, yeah. But right next to it.
I think we'll have to pay out too. No, I think we no. got enough. You got enough? Yeah. Still four meters up bottom. Do we know where we're hooking it? Oh, I see it. Big gray uh, circle at the top. I think you got enough place to get up there, all right. Wait, we're still lighting up the weight two and a half meters away from us, so we're good. Roger. Yeah, three meters away from us. I'm pulling it a little bit now. <coughs> It, how am I supposed to hook it like that? I'm gonna watch out for that. Uh, yeah, there's right. something to watch out for. Tilt down, maybe, Dan? Oh, yeah, I got it. That's not a very good angle. You're gonna have to bring your head to the Come back up a bit, <coughs> or float up. Back uh, towards the wire, head. Bring your head to the left and lateral yeah. right a little for me. See it in bubble. Okay, I'll let it come down a bit more. Okay. Hooked. Hooked. Maybe just float up on it there, that'd be great. <coughs> float up. I think I'm stuck here. Uh-oh. Yeah, just float, it's fine. What did you do that for? turning into a mess. <laughs> It'll clear. Just watch your heading. You're good. Yeah. I'm just staring at the wire in Atlanta, so no one else has to worry about that. <laughs> I've got all the anxiety on that. Right. <laughs> you don't have to worry about the wire. Randy will do more than enough wiring for, or worrying for all of us. Worrying, yeah. Wiring. I'm full wide. I can't see that other manip at all. Yeah, I pulled it tight, so when I let go of this thing, it doesn't unhook itself. That's the bummer about these hooks. They're hooked. Are the headings changing? Yeah, it's in the okay direction. Okay, I'm gonna uh, bring the shoulder down and you up. <coughs> I want to uh, swing your head back around to the left so you can yeah, it looks like that weight is to, yeah, right on your port. That's all I want to see. Okay, Rennie, you can come up a bit on it. Bring your head to the left a little more. Two, meter, uh, two meters? Or do you want to haul in continuous? Yeah, uh, just come up. Couple meters. Breaking the low. Winch control, haul in two meters. You're just floating on it right now, right? Yeah, I'm just floating. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. All good. <coughs> Starting to get taut. It's still drooping there in front of us. Come up a couple more meters, maybe. Two more? Yeah. You can actually pick it up. We can ride it up out of the mud, but... Yeah. 
winds control haul in two additional meters. God, he's so quick with that math. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to drop it and then the hook falls down into the instrument. So. Yeah, 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 Roger. So Atalanta is to the south southwest of the wire. Yeah, we're gonna. When uh, just to let you know your exit and strategy there. Mm -hmm. Come up a couple more meters and I'll let go. Copy. So start. Winch control haul in an additional two meters. Yeah, he can't. He can't get to six that quick. <laughs> <laughs> and throw him off. Okay, Jake, I'm gonna let go, and you right. can just back away a little and watch the wire. Or watch the package. Okay, if you want, you can come around here. Happy heading. Happy heading three one five. Oh, oh, there comes the package. Mm -hmm. right, just haul in. Yeah, yeah, come up. Winch control, haul in 10 meters per minute. You can chase it up, Jake. Yep. Head left right off the bottom. Continuous. Looked well clear of anything else. <coughs> now it's clear of the seafloor. You're in a safe zone there. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've got I'll the wire in front of you. Three one five. Yeah, yep. all's well. Let's. Uh, we'll oh. stop before the Doppler. We lose Doppler again. Yeah, Raj. Gonna be dusty down there for a while. Yeah. How far away are we from it? We are five meters away, which is kind of our comfortable standard. We're also <coughs> we're also done on the bottom come. floor in terms of the science objectives. Oh yeah. So oh, finished. Can, okay. We can chase this thing all the way up if we want. We're done. <laughs> done. 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 Okay. Let me just get, get mm -hmm. that going. Let's no harm in chasing it up. Then we don't we know where it is. Uh, logging off bottom. Give us something to do on the ascent. We'll follow the winch wire. Nicely done, Jake. Except for that visibility yeah. disruptor there. That was three <laughs> seconds of thrust. That, that <laughs> that's was, all it that's takes. That's all it takes, yep. <laughs> as soon as I did it, I was like, oh, God. You're comfortable? Keep coming up 10, or when uh, do you want to speed up? I want to keep eyes on the package there. Um, um, yeah, how about 20? Copy Winch control, you can increase speed to 20 meters per minute, haul in. Right. Can we make 20? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you, Light that's speed. much more appropriate. Uh. 
20 meters per second. How many? Increasing meters? speed to C. <laughs> I don't know if we can make 20. Per second? No. <laughs> per minute, you full up? I'm just. Dead oh, you're just floating up. You're floating up at 16, so I think we can make 20. Yeah, easy. I do that. I'm going to float up at 20. I'm sure they'll lose patience at some point. We'll have to <laughs> yeah, we can just drag it all south and then we'll have to pause at some point while they, they have to get it on deck first. Yeah, that's you know. like, that's yeah. a half hour. Yeah. yeah. We can chase it up at least to 100. So yeah, Rog. Get a little separation on the wire there. Get that mini theta a little more. I'm going to go prep some stuff for tomorrow's dive. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. work, yeah. <laughs> I've got that starboard banana crane on sat three. Oh, is this a throw a second? It's dark. <laughs> when did that happen? I don't know. Uh, he can extend his uh, boom back out if he has it yet, or whenever he's ready. Copy. Lounge control. probably fall asleep waiting for the ship to move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's that fifth five meter move that did him in. <laughs> we got Adal uh, Atalanta, Hercules, Delta. Oh, yeah. Delta. Horrible Atalanta hey, pilot. Front row, I got a split, but thanks a lot for helping get this Yeah, well done, down. Jim. Thanks, Jeb. thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah okay. thanks, Jeb. Okay. Good luck with the rest of the dive. I'm going to switch you from Doppler back to USPL. Go zoom in past the housing. Okay, you're on USPL now. Right in. Right in. Just enough time to for that to be a bad ping. What are you doing over there? There we go. <laughs> Get rid of elevator. I was going to joke and say, well, it's not moving because it's wrapped around our 6.8. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was wondering about that. <laughs> Been there, done that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sitting back here watching your compass, bro. It's just like, yeah, sneaking, sneaking, <laughs> sneaking. <laughs> By the time Bob and I got stuck around fishing gear, that yeah, was, that was great. I was like, Bob, Argus isn't moving. He's like, nah, no, no, fine. That was <laughs> when it that was when it arced over, <laughs> and me and Dan came in. Yeah, Dan yeah. came in, took the arm Yeah, we yeah. we were like, all right, let's get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Let me at it. <laughs> yeah. Fun stuff. Hmm. And Jake, on the uh, Nautilus Live uh, bio page, it says you're a navigator. Oh, well, I was supposed he to was. be. Yeah, was. I was supposed to be a navigator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was a navigator got until one day before the expedition. <laughs> got the call of duty. Do you, yeah. do you want me to update that, Jake? I mean, uh, it, whatever. <laughs> Wait, who's to say is navigator on this watch then? Well, me. <laughs> no, what's it say on the 
You mean, you mean for Megan's watch? Megan, Megan, right? Yeah. We have two navigators. We still don't know where we are. <laughs> yeah, what's mine say? Uh, let me Daniel. look it up. Our yeah. watch stuff is all over the place because of all the different, different watch schedules. Oh, right. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. It's not set up for that. It's not. It's really not. But let me see what I can crazy watch schedule here. There's another one for a nail in the coffin for the three to three. You should complain about that. Yeah, let's nice try. <laughs> Dan, what do you what do you prefer? He likes as three far to as three. watch schedule. <laughs> three. Three to three. Twelve, to twelve I like it when the whole boat is everyone's working twelve to twelve, I find. Yeah. Yeah, it's just but Here. I've been doing that for a while. So you have, you know, two you meters. work with the same people uh, through the entire 12 hours. And My page still says expedition leader. <laughs> so I'm the expedition leader <laughs> on this go. watch only. <laughs> then okay, right. That's it. Nice. Makes the meals better and you kind of split your day better, you know. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm just used to that. As, as I like that I'm an ROV pilot, not like just, you know, no, sideline, see a. Uh, you're an RV pilot, man. Exactly. Um, yeah, this position over here doesn't work that well, or we need more bunks. I will be a navigator in October, though. That's right. That's What's leg awesome. is that? I'm jealous. I've never got to be a navigator. Yeah, I've been pushing pushing for it for years. Yeah. Trying to get out here more often. You're gonna be like Brian, sitting every seat in here. Yeah, Dan Coleman as a Hookley's pilot. Hookley's pilot. I used to be ROV pilot. I got demoted. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess they're not going to boom out, eh? Um, so I think that I they so. typically go a bit faster up. If we want to, if we're done watching it, we could stretch out to the southeast. Yeah, I was kind of waiting for them to run the crane out. I don't yeah. know if oh, yeah. have or not. Yeah, I no, I can ask there. again. Yeah. Maybe try on radio. Yeah. We're still 10 meters away from Atlanta. Winch control. Oh, that's not good. Do you have a crane operator out there? Lounge nav. Okay, copy. We just like to extend out again. We got two lead navigators. <laughs> yeah, just I'm, I just saw that. <laughs> Who who's in charge here? Is it Lynette or Rennie? <laughs> that's a, that's up for debate. <laughs> Justin just found that the uh, code for that that like watch schedule page, or the I think it's the expedition page. Uh huh. Uh, uh, Mark was hard coded into it, so he showed up on every leg, no matter. Oh, what. really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> hard coded. Hard coded. Uh, yeah. That's hilarious. Just no variables. Just well, yeah. I mean, even the the phone number is on the ship. It's everybody it just says room six, room sixty eight, room whatever, yeah, and then just it says Mark's Mark. cabin. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Justin's yeah. cabin was on there too before. So highly sought after. Yeah, and they kind of mixed it up now. Yeah, I, Justin I mean, I had has a cabin. He used to be in 75 all the time back yep. when he was an employee. Mark's cabin. Hard-coded like the seat cushion in the... In the uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's a code, the, all right. The, the Mark divot. Yeah. I mean, Still there. He really made an impression around him. <laughs> <laughs> I used that joke before. I can't get away with that. It's the second time I've said it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Copy. I think he means extended, but see if it changes that ten meter. Yeah, ping yeah. we're getting would be interesting. To, Isn't that a boom out when you extend it? You just say extend out. 
boom out, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's not up or down. I guess you could say boom out, but I've never. You know the hand signal for that? Well, extend out? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a crane operator. Looks like, right? a, <laughs> looks, looks <laughs> like a, looks like a gnarly party. Yeah. Half Hawaii. Yeah, half Hawaii. Half hang loose, hang mi hang in the middle. Kind of looks like this, just a uh, alien, like a moon lander platform. Back to the moon. Yeah. So, do you guys want to do a couple questions, or? Oh, it did, it did move the wire. Yeah, it looks like it. it's getting or farther away. Yeah, we're good from yeah. I'm gonna cheat and see what they are. Uh, just one second. So, are they okay to, go ahead. Copy. Yeah, um, I think so. Are they okay to haul in at their speed? I, I think so, yeah. Okay. Winch control, you can haul in at any speed. We can. Uh, I drive. Yeah, you can turn and burn, and we can. What's your the tail. What's your wrap situation? I'm gonna want to go clockwise. You wanna let this thing fly out of frame first? Let's see if we see a change. It's going a bit north. Yeah, still, it's going the right way in Atlantis. So not. I think we're good. It's Ten meters away. Twelve meters away. There's going to be like a jump scare in the horror movies. We're going to turn around. It's going to be right in front of us. Okay, something is amiss here oh, with Hercules' position. I don't understand what's happening. You're on USBL. You I've sent your position source, USBL, and your heading is frozen. That uh, yeah. was weird. It's back. Very strange. Just waiting for the jump scare. That was strange. So <laughs> the last two uh, watches uh, with both Lynette and um, Megan, we've had the bathy turned on in here, yep. wh which makes it so we can't see the snail trails. Mm. And yeah. they've, they've had to click around in there for quite a while before they got the to get it like a the black screen back and the green snail trails on. Yeah, you should. It's just right click on the layer and then turn off visible and it goes away. So you can leave it in there and just keep, just turn it on and off visible yeah, or you can set the transparency. What they that's what they finally did. They tried to make the snail trail the top layer and that didn't, didn't work out. Yeah. I don't know what, what the dealio is there, but it costs them. We do have another 6 8 wrap. I don't know if you want to take, take that out. Yeah, uh, no, not really. Roger. It'll come out in the wash. Am I going too fast now? Or are you pegged full up? No, it's fine. I'm going faster than you. Roger. Smoky. Yeah. <coughs> Wonder if that's the dust or. <laughs> it's, uh, go ahead. Screaming. Copy. All right. Forty meters a minute over two thousand versus thirty meters a minute over two thousand. <laughs> we can never keep up. Yeah. I just want to see how much time they'll have to recover before we... Well, we could, but we maybe... This winch will do a meter a second. Two you knots. by hand? You don't spreadsheet that so They should have 20 minutes then. Mm -hmm. They should have 20 minutes to recover 
while we're still coming up without us having to pause. However, we can't stream forward. We shouldn't stream forward until they have it on deck. So we might have to pause at 400 and wait for them to get it on. And All right. Otherwise, it'll it'll beat back. And I think so. I think it'll stream back. 10 meters a minute. What's that, 10 meters a minute? 0.3 of a knot, 10 meters a minute. So we take a minute to walk from one rail of the boat to the other. That's our streaming speed. Yeah, well, I think it'll stream both of us out, which I'd rather oh, yeah. not do until... No, we shouldn't be doing that with two wires in the water. That would be, could yeah. be, could be bad. Yeah. Stream one right into the other, the light one usually into the heavy one. Yep. We have, uh, oh no, never mind. Never mind. I like that you've done it enough, you know which wire hits the other. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's also, we don't, like, the Common wires sense, will bend as empirical slightly experience. differently, you know? <laughs> so we only have a single location on each wire, <laughs> yeah. but the belly of it, it could be potentially. The shallower, lighter one always gets tangled up in the heavier, deeper one. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> he says what one of the trade magazines says. <laughs> I told that story before. That was the before. centerfold, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I came on watch one day somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico, and we had uh, the loop currents going on in the Gulf of Mexico. The what? The loop currents. So you huh. have some really wicked currents oh, down no there, kidding. two or three knots. I don't think I've ever hit those. And uh, we had <coughs> we had one vehicle down right at. Rated depth, 3,000 meters, 29 and change. And we had one vehicle standing by at 500 meters. Oh. And their TMS. And the loop currents, we were, you know, two or 300 meters away from the launch point. But at some point during the other shift, they had, had been wrapped it around moving the boat all over tarnation and changing the boat's heading so i come on and we're getting the regular hand over you know da 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 we're doing this da 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 you're getting ready to do the hookup and right as the other crew's walking out the door they said oh by the way we might be tangled up oh, oh man <laughs> like, see you bye i'm like wait 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 as a if minute. that's not wait the most minute. important what? piece of say? information <laughs> Yeah, we might be tangled up. They tried for a while to get it out, but they can't fly their ROV away. Well, okay, thanks. And they're in their TMS, right? They're latched into yeah. the tether management system. So I go trucking up to the R other ROV shack. And say, What's up? Oh, we might, that same thing going on. We might be tangled up. So we'll recover the deck. <laughs> no, we don't want to do that. We might be tangled up. Well, Come out of your TMS and have a look. No, we don't want to do that. We might not be able to get back in. Uh. <laughs> all right, so, so we'll all just stay here. <laughs> we'll just stay here <laughs> rubbing wires forever. <laughs> so we finally convinced them to, they were in detangle because they usually can fly in your TMS, you know, easily at 500 meters. You should be able to fly, you know, 50 meters in your TMS. And I couldn't go anywhere, so they finally got away enough to turn the vehicle in the TMS. See how it was tangled. Boing, there's a cable. Oh yeah. Right so we spent another, like, you know. Oh no, we did decide to come up at first. Come up a little bit, see what happens. And we come watched, up into the wire. Well, we watched our TMS's uh, depth, and sure enough, it started changing as soon as mm -hmm. they came up. So like, oh, that's not good. Anyways, they got unwrapped around. And um, so then we did the whole rest of the job. I think we laid, we were doing a, a pickup or a lay down or something of a pipe, I can't remember. And um, we started recovering to deck hours and hours later. And I told the kid on the winch, keep an eye on the wire. If you see any damage, any scuffing on the wire, stop. And we'll take some pictures of it and document it. And so we had a, a camera out, and it looked overboard, but it didn't show 
the whole, you know, we couldn't see the winch or anything. You could just see the overboard position. Because you usually person on the winch outside, physically sitting on the winch with one of these Dynacon controllers. And then all of a sudden I hear this cursing <laughs> and the winch stops. I'm like, what's going on out there? And the kid had his earbuds in under his his uh -huh. uh, David Clarks and jamming music and la -da -da. Oh. had the winch, you know, pinned like we do here. And it had it was oh, old, it? No, it was an old Dynacon 421 winch with a Dynacon launch and recovery system. So it had pulled. There was a whole bunch of loose, uh, you know, strands. broken strands on on the umbilical. All the outer ones were broken, and about 50% of the inners were broken. And this was, you know, you know, so at this point we had like 2,500 meters of wire out, and it had pulled a ball of strands that they went up through, through the docking the Lars. head. Yeah. And it didn't get through the level wine rollers, and there was this ball like this big. Big wuzzle steel. steel <laughs> wires. And we're in the loop current, so we have, you know, serious stress on the wire. And like, I, w I walked outside the van, and I took a look at that, and I went over to the rail and had to vomit. <laughs> so I had to wake the old man up and, you know, start, let the boat drift so we're not stressing the wire. And pay out. We had to get the bolt cutters out and oh, start cutting man. that stuff out. And we still had telemetry of the vehicle, amazingly. And I don't know, it probably took us three or four hours of cutting the wires away off the. and uh, duct taping everything up. And we finally managed to get two or three wraps of non damaged on wire of uh, on, yeah. onto the winch. Yeah. So at that, that point, holding here. it. Okay, yeah. and then we recovered the deck. Well, then you gotta go back and term it there, right? No, well, we did the whole rest of the job, uh, and because we never had to go that deep again, mm. and everything was okay. But um, and then you know, of course, we have to write the report to the office. And this, well, the next job you're gonna do, you're gonna need that mm. depth, right? So well, we can't, you know, go past those bad wraps on the winch and you know that damaged area. So how long is your tether? Uh, not that long. So they <laughs> said that we had uh, 800 meters of tether, so they're standard. And we had, you know, they get chopped, get shorter and shorter. So they sent us a new tether, so we spooled on the new tether, and they did the next job. With the so tether. they'd have to, yeah, they'd have to go down and, and leave three up. good reps and then run all that tether oh. up. <laughs> and they limped through a job like that, and my punishment was to meet the boat where it came in, I forget, somewhere down in Louisiana, spool all that cable off and spool new umbilical on. I'm like, well, can't we just change the winch out? Nope. <laughs> change the winch out because you've got a bad wrap of cable? Your uh, yeah. auto heading is fine in you. Uh, yeah, they have a bunch of winches. We had know. to unspool from here at Scripps once. I don't remember what that was for. Hockel, maybe? <laughs> you no, should have been here over the winter. They, um, that was also 421 Dynacon, but with all the 6.8 on it, it was crushing the fiber at mm. the, at, on the inside on of the, the drum. On the inside, right. Yeah, so they, I think that's the story. So they I spooled off. And for ended and spooled it back on and then cut the bad part out. I still don't understand how an optical slip ring works. Oh, it's beautiful. It's uh, got a prism inside. I, I knew it had to be a prism, but does a prism move or is it stationary? It moves? It rotates? Yes. Huh. Let me see if I can find a schematic for you. I'll see if yeah. I can show you a, yeah, a I'm technical... Yeah, I'm interested in that drawing of a optical slipping. I, ha I tore one apart after we uh, got it back from Teledyne last time. When I went through you school. You took one apart? Yeah, I got one sitting on my bench uh, at work. And that was it? No. It's got all these extra parts. No, they sent it to me. They sent, they sent it back with us and uh, said it was uh, pretty well screwed. It was the, uh, the optical part of the uh, main uh, slipping. Huh. Um, I would like to see that next time we're... I've never seen the inside of one. We've never been allowed to take one apart. Yeah, I've never seen the inside yeah. of one. The ones no, for the satellite like dish I've held. To. 
Those are cool, but those are all completely electrical. Okay, those are uh, yet another spendy bit of this habit. Yeah. I guess it would help if I turn my auto heading off, Jake. Huh? No, I'm... That's what's happening. Kiting around. Talking about turns in the wire. I should probably put the sonars back to their usual. I like them at 5 and 10. Kind of not how we roll. That might mess them up. That's our tip. 1752. I could probably just put you in autos already. Check, 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 check. Sorry, I gotta check them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine places. So they have it in a fluid they call optical fluid. Wow. Um, huh. And I'm having a hard time finding an actual picture of what it looks like inside. It's never been seen by human eyes. Yeah, I've never mm. been able to find a picture of what's inside. Maybe I've just seen one, but I can't really describe it that well. Right. I'm going to do a search. Standard slip wings are real easy. But basically, it's like a it's a glass disc, and the laser hits it from the side, and basically, there's an encoder in the center that sees that that signal through the center of this ring, and it doesn't get distorted because of the fluid. Huh. It's very all high, super high precision. So, here's what I'm found at grand slip ring dot something a fiber optic slip ring uses a rotating connector we know that part which is made up of thin strands of glass or plastic that are capable of transmitting light so yeah yeah we know that part <laughs> uh this allows a transmitter yeah, yeah I optical read that slip one. ring you read this <laughs> yeah More well, I mean, i'm sure no one else has heard it Fiber optic slip rings typically consist of a stationary base and a rotating connector. Yeah. And it's a slip Don't ring. worry, everything's fine. Yeah, this is fine. What in the world? They tell you so much about how it works. Uh, the stationary is made of metal or other durable material attached to equipment. Rotating is mounted on a shaft. Yep. Yeah. So just like, yeah, it's this, magic. It feels like this web page was written by ChatGBT or something. It's probably written by Teledyne themselves. Uh, if you're writing a term paper, don't go to that page. <laughs> oh. There's some videos on them. Hmm. Hello. Bridges plus nine gone to minus nines. Roger. Took a bridge. Part. Bridge calls you. Yeah. I got to take apart a hydraulic slip ring one time. It had Oops. ten passes in it. Go wow. ahead, bridge. That was definitely a work of art. The amount of yes, that is correct. Uh, we were recovering both a package off the starboard side, and then after that. 
we will be recovering the vehicles. I mean, it's essentially just a boy with a whole bunch of O-wings in the middle of it. And, uh, yeah, Roger that. We're at 1,600 meters, about an hour until ROV recovery. Um, but the starboard package will be sooner. Should Dan's taking the many of those apart. Oh, this looks promising. Put a few together. Okay, thank you. you. Can anybody read German? I know I'll know how to say it in German at least. Danny, you want to sit in for blue water? Yeah, I can move in over there. Rotating cable station killed. This doesn't look like, this is fiber optic, but. Jake needed a break after all that. <laughs> I bet he was a little nervous flying that. How many fibers do we have? Three? Yeah. Or the there's a dark one? To put our fourth. Uh, we have a brand new four pass slip ring we need to put in. So I haven't had the time to do it yet. So do I actually have to do anything or I just sit here and look, look pretty? You want to keep an eye on everything? You're in charge. Delta, ROV spread, 50 Delta meter spread. Meters. See it in uh, one or the other of the sonars. But typically, we want to see it in Atlanta sonar and make sure the compasses are opposite. Mm -hmm. It'll kind of walk around the walk around depending on the current. Forward, so we let it do what it wants to do on the way out until we usually about 500 meters we start streaming I will say this this chair is a whole lot more comfortable than the one over there at that table yeah that one over there is brutal I think we need to switch it out with something I tried to switch this chair because it's worn out but all the rest of them are all rocky so, so that one over in the, at the that table? one's not a Herman Miller no, oh, it feels like you're sitting on a piece of plywood. Yeah. Our Herman Miller chairs are... They're great. I love, yeah. I love Herman Miller's. They need to be sent back for refurb. Oh, man. Getting a little they loosen, loosen up. No, this one's... Yeah, got a yeah, hole they, in it. Yeah, they need all sorts of work. Sitting up like this. Yeah. You're sitting in a hole. We used to switch them out at Canyon, and they'd send us loner ones used ones and they come with all the plastic all covered on them their lifetime guarantee right everything they look brand new but they were used and then they would take ours back and they would come back looking brand new all covered in plastic we wow. have to give them the old ones back i mean it's worth it because they're like thousand dollars a chair or something yeah. <laughs> yeah i got a refurbed one of these at home and it was pretty inexpensive and the guy does a complete workup on them nice. brand new everything yeah, yeah. Only thing I miss about them is they don't have a headrest. Well, we do ask you to stay awake here. Yeah. <laughs> but looking up at the top screen sometimes is nice in that chair. Also. That's why I saw it so I can. I like the branding on those other ones, those gaming chairs. Having yeah. the logo and stuff on there is kind of cool. Yeah, but they will mess your back up. Well, Dan's worked at another provider that uses those. So my, uh, my youngest is, uh, he goes, I don't know, I look up at him now. He's probably got four inches on me at least. He's got German blood. And he goes probably about 2.30. And so his first gaming chair was this one of the, you know, looked flash, but it was one of the cheaper Amazon ones, and it lasted him less than a year. Completely destroyed it. So I bought uh, what they call a tall, they're tall and big and heavy or whatever. It's like big a, and tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. big and tall. Um, it's like a $500 chair. It's like heavy secret, like these. Like secret lab? I forget 
the DX Racer, Secret Lab. Um, there's, a, there's quite a few of them that cater to the gaming now. Yeah. Everyone's in the, in the market, but in the early days, there was only a handful of them that were actually any good. Yeah, the construction of it was amazing. So it all comes in a box, of course. So we had to, it took an hour to put the thing together. But the metal is all base. The, the it's got a big, huge, like two-inch piston in it. Yeah. And you can take the seat cushion out and put like a new cover on it. But it had all like uh, pleather on it. That's uh, what we were putting in the Super control van. Nice. We started oh, yeah. Secret Lab chairs in the control van, but... Had they held up? Well, one of the pilots decided he didn't want to haul back because we have people sitting right behind us. Right. So yeah, we ended up ripping the seat off of it too. and sticking the seat on our existing chair, and the rest oh, of it yeah. is the original chair. So I have half of a chair under my desk. <laughs> right. A really nice chair. It was like a $500 chair that we were it was a prototype to see how it worked. So you're in a single van with the monitors on the long side. Yeah. 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 yeah just like Pelagic. Yep. Same manufacturer. Never heard of them. Same layout. Oh, really? Is your rack at the end, is it made out of 8020 or is it a real rack? Oh, no, like we have a real rack. Yeah. Very full real rack. These are the tallest racks I've ever worked with. I didn't even know they made them this big. No, me neither. They're beautiful. They're 52 rack units, eight and a half feet. Or maybe the van's eight and a half feet. Well, the vans are extra tall, which is yeah. actually a really smart thing. Wish we went with the high cube. Oh, uh, yours are not? They're normal? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, if we had high cube, we could do this on the wall. Yeah, it's, I think it's just a little trickier to ship them, though. Yeah. Well, we never ship ours, so... Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they've got a lifespan of uh, a certain amount of years before they have to be replaced. Yeah, when you pick them up and the bottom stays. Yeah. <laughs> well... Yeah, all the strength in these vans really comes in the corners. That's yeah. the main reinforced part. These ones aren't, uh, are yours D&B rated? Or they're just Spock, regular Connex? No, it's not rated, fully uh, rated. They're D&B I think vans? so, yeah. Mm -hmm. They've got all the fireproof wall insulation and... The reinforced. Yeah. Yeah. Serious so have finished walls. And yeah, I was really. Ever seen the guts of one before they do the wall when they do the oh, DMV yeah. rating? They put all the reinforcement all the in. And reinforcement. And The 8020 is like, not the 8020, the Unistrut, uh, framing on these vans is absolutely a necessity. Well, we asked them to do, I mean, we, that was all part of our design for these. Yeah. Well, you these, should have seen what we did with our tool van. These vans are a product of Canada. They were made right in Surrey, not far from Sawasin. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the company we had make them Sonic, Sonic Solutions. Uh, I don't think it's Solutions. No. No, just Sonic. There's something after it. I think the one that built ours is called Container House, a place out of Texas. Yeah, there another. They do Sonic Enclosures. TV. Wow. Sonic I Googled closures, that's right. I Googled Sonic container vans and the first hit said OET control vans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pie chips. Already built, already designed, ready to go. Hey Ed. Yes, Marty. Why are they called vans? I've gotten that question a couple times. Well they're containers. Yeah. Why are containers called vans? Yeah. I can't answer that. Because they're designed for occupancy. They're like a 
control van sounds better than control container. No, a container is for storage, and yeah. a van is for occupancy. So but it's like, like a lab van. Or but like, we're not a van going on a road trip. Like, we, why don't no, we? No, we could be. These <laughs> could be put on a truck. We disconnect 13 cables. We're off the boat and moving. Yeah. 13 fibers. 1300 yeah, cables. Usually the 13 van fibers. Is for occupancy. Yeah. I just, yeah, I guess people assume we're going to call it the control room instead of the control it's van. It's not a room. It's not a, it's not a uh, compartment on the vessel. These are uh, something that can be moved to another vessel or put on a C5A and deployed. Don't they also call them moving vans? I don't know. Get the moving van to come Oh, these up. are old pictures, Dan. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the studio. They got pictures on their website of what this looks like empty with all the panels in place for transit. Yeah. I wonder where those wound up. Uh, Gulfport, Mississippi, I think. Um, no, um, I think they no, made, no, Mexico. They made it to Pedro. They're in San Pedro. Oh, okay. That's right. All their photos sure. are of this studio. I think they forgot to take pictures until it was time to ship it. I guess I'm going to lose my spot. No, I'll have her. Or you guys can trade. I'll let you walk her through it. I need a break, too. I think you're the trainer, uh, though, Dan. You've, you've done it a few times. I'm still trying to figure out what this button does. You know <laughs> what those buttons do. Hey. Well, this makes you go up and down. This drives a pan and tilt. This uh, takes the camera in or out, or you can also control a few other functions with it. Uh, this is your forward, back, left, right, and rotate button. So we can turn. So basically you turn this guy and you can turn the heading. You can side to side, gives you yaw, and fore and aft, drives forward, backward. Right now, right now we're just kind of we're pulling away on the tether, so as the Atalanta and Hercules are ascending the water column, they're kind of keeping in line at a distance. So, he has stick lock enabled, which is just barely given is just giving us a uh, hundred percent vertical and forward horizontal at seventeen. So we're driving forward at seventeen percent and giving a hundred percent vertical, so we're flying up the water column. So we keep the Teva and Atalanta tight. So Atalanta is coming up on the winch. And Hercules is flying in front, just kind of staying in relative position in front. I mean, I'm, that's right, right? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we have all of our controls here. We have hydraulic enables for the different valves, uh, power to the craft, which is our manipulator. We have all of our sensors, the Tonomon, the Octans, which is our navigational, inertial navigational sensor. We have the MISO sonar, which is this guy up here. Yeah. It gives you a 360 degree view around the vehicle. The Sea King, which is usually on this screen, but it's the, our main walking sonar. Sees what's in front of us and kind of gives us an idea of what right around us. Ferro Scientific is a pressure sensor, tells us our depth. Doppler is a uh, our Doppler array that bounces beams off the bottom of the ocean, off the bottom, and tells us how altitude. We also have a USBL, which is our sonodyne beacon, that uh, tells us our location in relative to the ship, of how deep we are and longitude and latitude. It's like underwater GPS. Uh, science, we have our science sensors. We have our temp probe, CTD, O2 sensor, uh, Ethernet bottle, which is our um, basically a fancy Ethernet hub router. We have the ONC CTD. 
And we have the ONC ICL uh, power, so when that's on board, we have all of our light control uppers, which are our big array of lights. We have mids, which are the ones in the center of the bar, starboard and port, look side to side. Uh, down lights are the ones we turn on that bright everything up right in front of us. Aft lights, so you'll see, well, we're not looking at Atlanta, right? Uh, Hercules right now, but when you're looking down at Hercules, you'll see the two lights sticking out like this behind us. You'll see, actually, you can see them right there. And uh, we have a pan and tilt light, which is usually on the pan and tilt, but right now it's not. We have our lasers. Pew! And then we have our camera control, our HD camera. We have bubble cam, our aptly named butt cam, or aft cam. Starboard rail, port rail, bucket. Uh, bucket cam usually looks at the suction sampler, but we've switched that out to a wide eye, which is that camera over there that gives you kind of an overview of everything in front of the vehicle. We can isolate all kinds of electronics on the vehicle for diagnostics or just system isolation. Uh, this is how we control, this is actually how we control the uh, Magnum on. So we don't have a joystick for that one, we just push buttons. So we like bump it, every time you bump it, it moves like a quarter inch. <laughs> so we get a, or hold it and then you can, <laughs> yeah. But that's all the functions for that. We have our sample tray out, sample tray in, which is the box right in front of us, sample jar, which is the suction sampler. We have tool tray. We have a porch extension and pan and tilt control, which is basically this button version of this joystick here. We also have our suction sampler uh, pump down here, and we have a bunch of valves for auxiliary functions that are currently not plumbed anything. Um, I don't think we can turn on the blow, can we? Huh? Color lights? The suction sampler. Oh. I don't think we can push out. No, yeah. Just one way. Yeah. It's a venturi pump uh, effect instead of a pump. You can't hear me. You can tell her. Yeah. It uses uh, venturi. So then we've got our autos, which is kind of like our autopilot control. So we want to go straight and narrow for a distance at a certain height for an altitude uh, and a certain speed. We can set all that up here. Our sensor readout, our CTD, our octans, which is giving us a reading because of a bug. Uh, TCM, which is an altitude altimeter, not altimeter, sorry, it's a um, accelerometer. Gives us a heading, pitch and roll, mag magnetic compass, and then pitch and roll on the vehicle, which is here. Oh, forgot that's a touch screen. Uh, Fairly scientific. <laughs> Step sensor. I heard someone laugh. Who's yeah, laughing at me? that was me. Because normally it happens the other way around. The Herc pilot comes over here and sits down and starts stabbing at the screen. <laughs> it's rare to see it go the other way. You're saying Herc pilots get demoted and August pilots do not? Uh, well, I'm just <laughs> saying that when one sits over here, they stab at the screen. Yeah. So. We have all of our sensors from both vehicles on here. Utilities giving us our vertical velocity, our time to surface, 52 minutes, 31 seconds, at the current velocity. Uh, alarms, which tell us just different things in the system, if everything's okay. Yeah, don't, yeah. We're not gonna go there. <laughs> Then we have our Atlanta pilot control. So this is how we choose the heading on Atlanta. This is Atlanta's heading, this yellow button. So we can change the heading. We can also manually control how Atlanta is reacting in the water. Um, lights on Atlanta. Our camera controls, HD cam, SD cams. Our tilt function that allows us to rotate the camera up and down. Thrusters. And then we have uh, sonar and USBL and altimeter, very scientific. That's pretty much everything in the GUI to control the vehicle. 
I, oh, well, okay. Well, this is the Hercules control box, and... <laughs> Uh, let me just whoop, 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 rewind the tape. Uh, <laughs> I'm dating myself. <laughs> Kids today don't even know what a tape is. It's like, oh, 911, call the operator. Wait, yeah. dial the operator. What's dial. The, uh, dial? What's an operator? <laughs> You know, the first time we uh, put a system on Thompson, it used videotape in 2005. It was HD cam uh, videotape, but still, it's videotape nonetheless. Yeah. Well, I remember when I came on to Thompson in 2014, you had like a fancy, uh, I, I had, a, had decks or something in it, right? I uh, had a mobile rack that had... Um, uh, some media encoders, and I had an autonomous robotic LTO tape library. Yeah, you had an yeah. autonomous tape library. I thought yeah. that was really cool. Yeah, it was a super nice way to protect all the assets. And here we've got the same thing. We just call it Justin. <laughs> just has a different name. But it, it brings all the tapes you need up and changes them out as needed. We don't have to do anything. But was it tape or was it hard drives? Yeah, they were LTO archival tapes, so they have a 30 to 50 year rated life, which is much, much longer than a hard drive or even an SSD. It's a sealed compartment and it writes and reads the tape through the uh, And through that's the just thing. a good quality? You can get a quality? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can put, it's a data backup. So we're not recording directly to it. We were uh, recording to intermediate format and then putting it on a internal RAID and from the internal RAID, and we have a very similar workflow here, then from that RAID it goes directly to tape. Every file gets put to two identical tapes. Uh, oh. And then uh, best practices off the vessel, one stored in a different region of the world than the other. So if there's a you know, tremendous uh, cataclysmic event, you don't lose everything. You've got, like I've got um, on, uh, our drive array for my firm, I've got everything in the Pacific Northwest of the United States, and we also store it all in a data center in Frankfurt, Germany. Oh, cool. So You mean you don't just use uh, SD um, Three and a half inch drives, floppies? Three and a half, uh, no, not three no. and a half inch floppies. I was going to say um, just uh, solid state drives and a Drobo. No, as a matter of fact, uh, Drobo <laughs> is gone now. They have uh, passed away, unfortunately. Really? Yeah, they're gone. Um, but there's great... Oh, no, we're going to have to figure out how we're going to save Duke there, High footage. There's, uh, or is that what you guys have been using? We, we literally have like four Drobos. Yeah. And so we use a standard uh, Blackmagic Design um, solid-state recorder. Oh, yeah, the Hyperdeck. Yeah, the Hyperdeck. And we just swap out during dive. Yeah. And then we'll go into it, and we'll just offload into a robo. And then at the end of the cruise, right. we'll hand the hard drive pack to uh, yeah to the PI. Like there you go. <laughs> and then the rest of it goes on to our uh, archive. Yeah, and I don't know if they just recently stopped operations or if that was a while ago. I was talking to somebody about that. I used to give them to clients who did not have a data engineering department. So I just told them just keep huh? putting in. Oh, actually, maybe they're... If you would like to show her and let her operate that craft, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. I'm sure that she will be the happiest person yeah. ever. January 27, 2023, Drobo support and products are no longer available. 2023, that's ah. now. So yeah. it sounds like uh, we're going to have to rethink our data acquisition system for a loop uh, Although, there's a button here that says shop. That seems contrary to... Yeah, no they're longer selling available. Off all the old, old uh, stock. Parent. Well, uh, no, they are gone. Yeah, good call there.
Marley, are you still hiding in the uh, studio somewhere? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. I'm not hiding. I'm in plain view. I can actually yeah. see more from up here. <laughs> I can't see you at all. But I trust that you're there. Yeah. Oh, there you are. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Um, What's up? I think somebody had asked earlier about the delay between moving the uh, parent for the uh, manipulator and how long it takes to see that take place and its speed of light. Yeah, I w yeah, I saw that question too, and I was like, well, that's uh, there is no delay. Right, since we're moving the manip now. It's hey, Danny, can we get uh, down lights on, please? Yeah, I can turn on some down lights. I mean, it's literally real time, right? Yeah. It's like playing yeah. a video game. It's, it's, your, it's your instantaneous. So, to Danny, do you want to talk about that for a minute? About uh, he's got somebody on the arm now, so I'm going to come out of auto iris, pink, and give you a better exposure there. I mean, I don't have. The I mean, I should. All right, oh, here's what I'll do. I'm going to make a little video oh, of this. That was a very here. interesting fish. Super hot. I saw that. Is there a shark? Wow, it kind of looked like a shark. Yeah. Uh, or like a chimera or something. Yeah. But I don't know what it's doing way up here. That yeah, that was, was really weird. Yeah, that was like wider than you would expect. I'll yep. stop on the range. Let's go back down and investigate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I wish. <laughs> we got lots more diving to do, just not here. Yep. This is it for our main endeavor field activities. We will be transiting to Cascadia. Is Basin. it Cascadia is the next one? Yep. Good, Cascadia. It's That's about fun. a five and a half hour transit. And we'll be diving there. Cascadia is the deepest site. At 2,600 meters, 2,650 meters. So Cascadia was actually the first science cruise I went on in the Thompson. We went to Cascadia. Cool. And then right after that, we went to Newport and loaded on... Uh, Wait, was that... An, uh, it was 2014. It was right before you came on board. Wait, because I had a year where we did Ocean Networks Canada back-to-back -back with UW, and I did both. Or maybe I did UW then ONC. I don't remember. So I, this wasn't ONC. This was uh, okay. Cascadia Cruise with University of uh, Washington. Okay. And then we offloaded Jason. Really? Let's be very careful there, Jacob. And then loaded on Ropos and picked you guys and picked everyone else up in uh, in Seattle. We loaded Ropos in on in Seattle. At Pier 90 or 91. I remember yeah. that because I passed their vans going down I-5. Yeah. And I was like, well, I'm plenty early if I'm passing the RV control vans. Or actually, no, it wasn't control vans back then. It was ship's lab space. Uh, yeah, it was a lab it's space. It was a hydro lab. They had all the extra. Yeah, all their stuff. The Lars. Yeah. They had the Lars, and then they had their like, main maintenance van and their yep. stores van. Uh, remind me to tell you a story about that day. That yeah. was a long day. We, uh, and all the stuff they put down in the hold, all those cases and everything. Oh, God, yeah. Because didn't we demob in Victoria? Yes. Yeah. No one was allowed off the boat, but they yeah. demobed everything in the Victoria. And that was at Esquimalt. Esquimalt. I don't know. So it had giant cranes, the graving docks. Yes, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. That's a nice neighborhood, too. I'm going to have to ask one of my ONC colleagues how you actually pronounce that na that word. No, there's not much to hit other than the vehicle. So as long as you don't hit the vehicle, we're good.
They're funny. 2014, I was on Thompson. 2016, I'm in the Northwest Hawaiian Islands with the Pisces submarines. That yeah, was quick. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't in the subs, and I wasn't right. involved with them directly, but I was sailing as an engineer on the ship. Did you keep your rating? I know somebody looking for an AB and a QMED. Uh, no, thanks. I do still have my license. I do right. have a full QMED ticket still, but I have uh, retired from that portion of my career. There you go. <laughs> hey, Ed. I have much more fun. Yes, Miss Marley. I'm going to get my laundry, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> Roger. Good to know. I'll be back. So we need to take Oranges Konakis down with us on these yep. dives. Take what down? The Oranges Konakis. Oh, yes. <laughs> we'll just set it places, random places. Well, unfortunately, these are scientific study areas. So. Yeah. Well, I meant just for photo ops. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> put, a ha put a happy face on it or something. Hey, am I racked back? I believe you are. Let me find I'd out. I'd love to be. Just saying. Hmm. Good eye, Ed. I want to keep it that way. Okay, mm -hmm. now you're racked back. Great, thank you. Uh, I'll give you... They're getting ready to recover the package. Excellent. We're still at 800 meters, so I think we'll be able to not stop our ascent. We'll just keep on. No, I think we're fine to keep continue because I think they'll have it on board by the time we, depending on how long they take. If if we hit 400 meters, we'll hold um, and just wait for them to be done, and then we'll stream and continue on up. Don't forget to move the wrist forward. See how you're not straight? Oh. See how you're not straight? You're bent in. Move your uh, wrist up. Not that way. Other, other up. There you go. Go ahead, Bridge. And close your jaws. After recovery, we will have main engines on and transit Pods. to the selected target, uh, which is about 56 nautical miles east. And you look in the down cam and Thank you'll you. see everything's nice and happy. And uh, they're just getting ready to bring the package on board right now uh, for the starboard. Goes to its happy spot. Roger. Yeah, I can show oh, no, you. And now imagine us plugging things there, in and hooking things, and, and I'm sitting. I'm sitting in here. Like that long. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Do a little of this. Okay. Back to it. <laughs> now imagine doing everything backwards when you're in digging in the toolbox here. All you're you're looking at it completely reversed. So this way is this way. This way is this way. <laughs> I 
I got some really good ones of Megan yesterday when she was flying. You think Dana's gonna be deck duty? Oh, I'll call this a 622. I will switch out for you though. I will not be flying this vehicle on the surface. Oh, yeah, super easy. <laughs> <laughs> not until it's like dead calm and Dan standing right here next to me. It's super easy. Well, I'm sure it is, but you've got all the skills to do it. I have a total of about an hour and a half flying this yep. vehicle. Yeah, well, <laughs> it might take a little more than that. So it might be a good point. Yeah, it really isn't that bad. It's just there's a few like buttons you just got to remember to hit. Or, you know, a few gotchas. <coughs> I think a launch is way easier than, or a recovery is easier than a launch. Yeah, once it's hooked on the crane, you're kind of not really doing anything. What are you guys talking about? Recovery is easy for launch. It's hard. Uh, recovery is much harder for me on a, yeah. than a launch. <laughs> for the for the pilot. There's, there's, oh, for the pilot, yeah. But you got to stay back. You got to yeah, stay like aligned. Hey, can we uh, can we put bubble in the front porch just for a second, just so I can get a screenshot of it? Uh, it's like recall one, I think. Could be wrong. You gotta click on the. Yeah, it's got to be the active window for it to work. Uh, I can't see if the front porch is in there or not. Oh, oh yeah, perfect. Thank you. I got it. And then uh, do the starboard uh, bucket transition again. Where did the mouse right. go? I should just have a hotel cameras menu over here. Yeah, we'll just you know bring them all up on Ethernet, and you can just choose whatever one you want. Great, done with that. And then the same thing on uh, port and bio, if you could. Yep. I can't hear myself. Think. Uh, top right button. No, I got it. Okay. I always love sitting in the pilot seat and messing with everyone's controls and all their settings. <laughs> now that's why they're all messed up. Mm -hmm. Dan does it every time he sits in the, in the Atlanta seat. When Dan goes on holiday and rents a car, he flies in a day early, so he's got all the adjustments made before his family shows up. <laughs> it takes him about yeah, that long to get it. everything. <laughs> yeah, he's installed some more cameras. <laughs> now he's down there listening, too. He's got four more mirrors put on it. <laughs> Mounted a... 55 inch television in the passenger seat with data displays, maps. Heads up display in the windshield. It's kind of funny. So I play this game called Star Citizen. And uh, it's like a space civilization simulation lifestyle game. Hmm. It's really in depth. Like, I'll spend hours mining on an asteroid with a joy two joy. I sit in my chair, I have two joysticks and a full heads up display, a tablet full of buttons. It looks yeah. just like the hook GUI. Now, you can only play free for six more days, you know. <laughs> What? They pay me to play this game. Oh, no, not that game. The, uh, <laughs> sorry, it's just reading here. It says play free until July 17th. Oh, Star Citizen? Yeah. 
Oh no, I've I pay, I've been paying that. Oh okay. I've good. been paying. Oh god, I probably got six hundred dollars into that game. Oh, <laughs> you gotta buy wow. ships. Like Look at it's that. crazy. This game is very in depth. Uh, in depth, and it's been a, a pre-access huh. for like ten years. It's definitely got a cult following, but uh, the heads-up display, the ships are done really well done. Everything nice. works in the ship, so you're walking around, you want to open a drawer, you open a drawer, you can store things in that drawer. Huh. Uh, there's touch screens throughout the ship to control various features, but like there's mining on asteroids and stuff, so you control, you, it takes like four people to run a ship, you'll have people in these um, mining Back in auto iris. And then you have someone actually flying. Oops, disregard, taken out. And you're yeah. doing full comms. It's a lot like flying an RV, but in video games. Now are you doing this online with other participants? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah is there I, mean, I usually stream on Twitch when I, when I play it. Oh, really? Look at you go. Do, wait, do you chroma key yourself in? You can. But you don't? No. Oh. That's a cool setup when people do that. No, I think that's that's them. one platform I don't think uh, 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 Nautilus Live is on yet. I don't think we're on Twitch. Huh. Marley, you listening? We, we don't need Twitch? any more platforms. <laughs> oh, did you get your Threads account set up yet? <coughs> no. <laughs> threads. I was just explaining that I'm not on the TikTok. Oh, I'm man. an old person. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of old people on TikTok. <laughs> what is Threads? Basically a Twitter, but Facebook? Yep, that's a great description. The uh, the one thing that keeps me off uh, TikTok is that horrendous automatic voice that they use. Oh, there's several of those. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, there's one that's uh, just so bothersome to me, I, I can't bear it. But hey, Ed, how do you control the place, bottom right? left monitor here? Uh, that's probably KVM. Oh. Alt, Control, X. I thought there's a press button for it. Monitor top, monitor bottom. Nope, that, that panel has never been programmed. Oh, I see. So the mouse is controlling. What's the mouse and keyboard controlling? The bottom monitor. But you got to use the GUI to call something up. Okay. Oh, I can only imagine Ed building a full like simulator oh, yeah. for that, for that game, because people go crazy and do complete dashboards with all the buttons, live buttons, going to uh, encoders and. I ran. I, uh, I actually set up a program. Oh, what the heck is it called? It's called Voice AI, I think, where you can voice control the ship. And the ship will oh, wow. have a voice of like William Shatner or Data. Or <laughs> That's awesome. I'd be like, computer, start, up, start launch sequence. And like all the systems will come online. And because it's really in depth. Like, it, Literally, like, step one, turn on these things, or you can't even get off the ship. It is buggy, though. All right, so it the is not a game for the ill-fainted uh, people who want uh, to get, right. who get frustrated. It just makes the it more real, because what system doesn't have bugs? Wheels are on board. We're following the recovery of that instrument on Sat Feed 3. Yeah, that was the thing I liked about the original Star Wars, is all the stuff was old and broken. You hadn't seen a futuristic movie that took into effect that stuff aged before. Yeah. Everything was new and shiny and tons of lights. And there, along comes Star Wars and there's Harrison Ford pounding his fist on the dashboard like, come on, start. That was something I really liked about, um, oh. What's that show that, a newer, newer TV show that, uh, uh, <laughs> this is going to be really uh, blame. Um, basically, Earth and